Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham. The subject we're going to tackle here is making a montage. The success of a montage is not solely achieved with Photoshop technique. Of course, we need techniques to achieve the montage, but the success of it has a lot more to do with our own creativity. What images we decide to use, where we place them within the montage, what decisions we make about composition, and how the colours of the individual images all match together. Now given the unpredictable nature of making a montage, the work we do can be a little bit trial and error. Of course we do get better results with time and a little experience. But the one thing we need when we're making a montage is flexibility. We need to be able to change our mind constantly because that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So to give myself the freedom to change my mind as I see the montage coming together, I'm going to be using smart objects for as long as I can. Now I doubt there's any rights and wrongs when it comes to making a montage, but when I sit down at the computer, I find it helps if the very first stage is to select a background, something reasonably neutral, something with a little bit of texture. Now it's also best if we've got a large number of images, even if we're only going to use four or five, if we've got 20 or 30 images to choose from, then that's going to broaden our creative approach. It's a little bit like the audio-visual medium. If you're making a slideshow with 30 images, you're probably going to want 40 or 50 at least from which to choose the 30. Now the montage process can be quite lengthy, so I'm going to speed it up wherever I can. I've already looked through my backgrounds. This is the one that appeals to me. No rights or wrongs. I just like the way it looks. I'm going to open this up into Camera Raw. Remember, we're working with raw files here. Now I'm going to take it as read that we've done the lens corrections for every image we use. I don't want to have to mention that every time. All I'm going to do here is look at my histogram. I'm just going to give a few tweaks here. I don't want it to be too bright. Maybe I may even leave it down there a little bit. A little bit of blacks, a little bit of clarity. The truth is, I don't actually know what I do want at this stage of creating a montage. So I'm going to open this as a smart object into Photoshop. Now there's not a great deal I can do with one image, so I'm going to go down to my bottom bar and open up Bridge and select the next image. Now what I want here is a portrait. I want one of these and I'm going to make that the focal point of the montage and I'm going to start with that. I'm looking at this one. This one looks quite good because I like the old-fashioned uniform although I'm not sure I want that bright red there but that can easily be masked away. I've used this lady before but I keep coming back to this gentleman here so I'm going to open this one up into Camera Raw and I'm going to do much the same as I did a few moments ago. I'm going to drop the blacks a little bit let's just drop the exposure a little bit, bit of highlights, take his face down a bit I don't need it too colourful that's fine, I'm going to open that up into Photoshop along with the other one now once my postman is on screen I need to start making my layered stack I'm going to work by dragging the tab from the top of the screen with the move tool selected I'm going to click drag and drop and then of course I can close down this because we don't need it anymore first thing I've got to do is to position this guy exactly where I want him to do that I'm going to take just a quick look at my crop tool so I can see the rule of thirds. Now this guy would be perfectly placed if I was going to leave him there but my first instinct was to have him on the left side so I think I'll follow that instinct. I'm going to close the crop, pick up my move tool and I'm going to move him over. 
I'm going to make him a little bit smaller, I think, as well. So I'm going to hit the Control T to bring up the free transform tool. Hold the Shift key to make him a little smaller. So that's the sort of size that I want. So a quick look at the crop once again. Well, as you can see, I've got it almost spot on. If I was being really critical, I could move him a little bit to the right, but I don't think it's a really big deal. But seeing as we've looked at it, we may as well do it. The next thing I'd like to do is to look at the blend modes over in the layers for the postman. See if we can blend the, po the postman into the background, and this is where the texture comes in. I'm going to go up to the top here. I'm going to jump around and speed this up a little bit. I may do some of my searches off camera, so to speak, just to speed up the process. But this is the sort of thing I would be doing. I would be looking at the most common blend modes that work for me. Darken is worth looking at, and you can see the effect. Multiply is worth looking at. Normally I miss some of these others. Occasionally I look at lighten and screen, but I generally jump then to overlay, and that's got some promise. Then I look at soft light and finally hard light. Now I'm telling you that because, and that looks quite good too, I'm telling you this because I'm going to be doing that with practically every image I bring in, but I don't think I need to actually demonstrate that. I'll just tell you what I've selected once I've selected it. What I need to do now is to do a little bit of masking. So I'm going to apply a layer mask to the postman layer. I can do that from the bottom of the toolbox of course, the layers. I'm going to use a combination here probably. Let's switch to black as my foreground colour. I'm going to pick up my gradient tool. A linear gradient set with foreground to transparent. I'm going to use that for the base to blend him in nicely there. I can get rid of most of that pillar box I think and a little bit on that side too. Now I've done that, the guy looks a little bit on the small side. But I won't worry about that yet. I'm going to do the rest of the masking. I'm going to pick up my brush because I'm not a great lover of the bright green around his head. So what I'm going to do is to set my flow first of all at its maximum and just take away the majority of this. And then I'm going to go in and work just a little bit tidier around his face and his hat. So I will be zooming in nice and tight. With this particular montage, I'm going to keep this quite tight. So I'm going to use the shift method I think I've demonstrated a couple of times. So I'm going to go around the edge in this manner. And this is a sort of thing which I'll just remind you of the technique I'm going to use, but I can't keep showing you this because if I use it with other images, then this video is going to end up far too long. So you, there you can see the technique. I'm going to do the rest around his head and then we'll pop back and have a look at what we have. Now you can see I have completed the masking and it does make me think that I want to make the guy just a little bit bigger. But to be honest, you're never really sure of these things. And there's also something else that I've got to fix in my background. Can you see that stud there showing right through the guy's face? Well, we've got to do something about that. Normally we would give that a touch with the spot healing brush, but of course we can't do that while retaining a smart object. And I'm not sure yet whether I want to beef up the background or tone it down. It's not until I get maybe another couple of images in there, or even all of them, that I may know that. So just for the moment I'm going to leave that huge, what looks like a huge pimple on the guy's face and we'll deal with that later and I'll go with my instinct of making the postman slightly bigger by selecting the layer, bringing back my free transform tool with Control T and because we're working on a smart object what I'm doing here doesn't have any danger. I don't want to make him a lot bigger Something like that should do it. Let me just hit the tick and take one quick look at that crop. Yeah, I think I can live with that. Okay, now I need to think of another image. 
Well there you can see my next selection. I'm going to drag the tab from the top of the screen and with the move tool selected click drag and drop as before and close this one down. Now what I wanted to do with this one I want the boat going the other way and I want to see if I can use it over on the right hand side. The problem I've got is I've got words here but until I actually do it and blend it in I won't know if it's going to work. Remember if we want to flip one layer we do that via the edit menu. If we want to flip the entire canvas we do that via the image menu. So if I go to edit transform flip horizontal I want to move this over here somewhere. I want to try to get that that boat coming in there, maybe I'll drop it down a bit. I'm going to make the image smaller as well. Control T. I'm going to drag that down. What I'm looking for is something almost to point to him, so I'm trying to help my composition here. I'll bring it in a bit more and a little bit bigger because we've got to blend it and mask it. I'm going to hit the Enter key to commit that change. And I'm also going to look down my blend modes and see if there's one there that takes my fancy. Well hard light is what appeals to me and I've applied that and put on a layer mask. So with black selected I'm going to pick up a brush. I'm going to use it at a high flow rate to start with just to take away the straight edges and the worst of this and I've already gone too far with that on the left so let me back away from that I use control Z then but now I'm going to drop the tool flow down to 10% and I just want to sweep along the bottom just so I can see the water but I can also see the texture coming through I'll lose the whiteness of that boat on the edge I think and I do want to lose the greens for some reason that I can't explain they don't seem to fit here, probably it's a colour thing. But I will be taking a bit of time to go around the edge just to remove those greens. Now as I started to mask the boats, I decided to move them down a little bit. But I finished the masking and I think they're looking okay. But my attention was drawn to my postman again because I resized him. I've got another one of those studs now clashing with his ear so I just want to take another look at that I think I'll just move him a little bit to the left I mean it's not a big issue I could always cover up the stud a little bit later on with the spot healing brush but I think we could do with moving the guy just a little bit so I'll just slide him a little bit to the left just to slide him off of that stud that looked good and it's given just a little separation between the boat and him so I need another image now to save a bit of time I've looked in my folder of images just found this partially buried coal truck and a spade dragged it into the montage in the normal way and as you can see with the free transform I've rotated it a little bit and I'm just tucking it up into that top corner I'd like to be able to see that shovel if I can but we'll see and what I've got to do next is to add a layer mask but you'll also see that I've m blended this image with overlay from the option just above so I think I'm happy to hit the enter key apply a layer mask and I'm going to mask around the edge probably do this freehand I may just drop the flow rate down to about 10% and I may do it pretty I'm going to drop it down to about 5% because I want it to blend in but I don't want to see the edges and I don't want the tool to run away with me but that's not looking too bad let me make that a little bit see through that's not too bad there was a thought I had to place a one of those metal adverts up there the only problem with doing that it could draw the eye a little bit too much but sometimes I think they work quite well the other thing I've been thinking of is what do I use for the left hand side and I'm reminded when I just temporarily turn off the mask 
with a shift and click that I do have that pillar box and I'm wondering whether I should bring it back or not well what I might do is make sure I save my montage at this stage then I can have a look at bringing back that pillar box and see just how it looks well there you can see the postman with the pillar box back and I think it works quite well but I'm just wondering if the color is a little bit over dominant for the image we're working on well one of the things I'd hoped to be able to demonstrate is what I think I can do now remember we're working on smart objects here so despite the fact I have this reduced in size moved and masked I still have a smart object and a double click takes me straight back into camera raw so if I wanted to take down the saturation a little bit kill some of that on the just on the post box there's no risk is there because I can put it back if it doesn't work to be honest I think I may get away with a bit more so I can double click again and maybe take just a bit more away click OK it's still working isn't it so I'm happy I think to live with that now the picture looks just a little bit of a mess at the moment but I've stopped at this point to just bring you up to speed with what I've done I am going to risk bringing in a word as you can see an advert for Bovril I've made it slightly bigger I've actually taken it up bigger than it really should be but in a montage no great problem in doing that as you can see I've rotated it and I want it to actually fall behind the guy it looks a little bit too colorful I've blended it with overlay so what I'm going to do is double click and take it back well I need to enter the the free transform tool first and I'm going to double click and take some of that color away and come back that looks a lot better and what I'm also going to do is mask away most of this but sometimes what you can do you can always try bringing things down the stack and seeing how they look in different places it doesn't really do a great deal for that one so what I'm going to do here is put on a mask and I'm going to mask around the edge now that's going to be quick and easy with that shift method remember you start at 100% hold the shift key and just move along in stages and you'll be around this in no time at all now you can see I've done the masking from the sign and it's still a little bit dominant for me so what we could do is select the sign and drop the opacity down as well as the applying an overlay blend mode and also a mask so we can take it down but if it does attract our attention then at least it's attracting our attention to the right place now I've just looked into the images I have see if I could find something to go around the outer edge and I thought about some brickwork and this sort of thing is what I had in mind but certainly not with the sunlight soap in the middle but what I can do here perhaps is to check the blend modes which I've already done and the best one seems to be darken but when I add a mask I'm going to add a mask that's already flooded in black to do that if we hold the alt key when we click the mask the mask is applied but it's as I said flooded with black because all I need to do is to bring in that brickwork just around the edges so now rather than having a white mask where we paint black we've got a black mask and we can paint white so I'm going to bring my brush up nice and big looking at my flow rate it's a hundred percent that's a little too much but I'm going to make it 10 and now I'm just going to see what I can do around the edge to see about just holding this image in a little bit down the bottom there it may be more interesting than the water to be honest but it was mainly this bottom left corner that I fancied and that's looking pretty good I quite like that that's not looking too bad at all now with the spinning round of the image I've just darkened down the background a little bit down that streak and this streak allowed the shovel to come through just a little stronger 
but that's about all. But I need to deal with this stud that's in the background. Well, I don't think I need the background to be a smart object anymore, so I can right click to the right of the thumbnail and rasterize it. I'm going to pick up my spot healing brush, but I want to remove the sample all layers otherwise it is going to pick up pixels from the other layers and on this occasion I don't want that but I just need to touch that to take it away and we'll take a little bit of that red away near his eyes as well and that actually is working in my favor I think a little bit there we have it one last thing if you want to give a bit more impact to the face of the guy here what I can do is maybe copy that. I'm going to hit Control J to copy that layer. Drag it right to the top of the stack. Select the mask and flood it with black. Alt Backspace will do that. So what I've done is I've put the image up there. I'm going to take away that hard light. I'm going to go back to normal. All I'm going to do now is spray white on my mask just to reveal the face through a wee bit stronger and see how that looks not sure may not work but let's test it I need my brush to be very low so I'm going to drop it down to about 2% flow just a little bit of a brushing over there you can see the face just coming up just a little bit just to be that tiny bit more dominant now after saving this again I've got quite a number of different versions saved but I'm conscious that we're probably reaching 25 minutes with this video and that's quite long. So I think we've covered all of the techniques so what I'm going to do is bring this to an end by saying I'm happy now to flatten all of those to finish the image. One little word of warning if when you're making a montage like this you can actually leave it put it to bed so to speak and look at it again in the cold light of the next day you're probably going to do a slightly better job I'd be doing a few jobs here with the dodge and burn tool maybe a bit of vignetting around the outer edge I would investigate a black and white conversion a sepia, terge, sepia version if I can say it and even maybe a black and white with just a hint of color once we're making a creative image like this then once we get to this point we can start to flex our muscles just a little bit and have a look at what else we can do now because I'm conscious of the time we're taking on a piece of work like this I've gone ahead and made a few derivatives there we have the original image I felt it needed a bit of vignetting around the edge but rather than commit that directly to the image I drew a selection around here as we've done many times inverse that selection and I just flooded that layer with black there you can see what it is it doesn't actually look that much but when we see it turned on and off with the image it does make quite a bit of difference and of course the beauty here is if we feel that that vignette is a bit heavy I quite like it actually but if it was a bit heavy we can use the opacity to temper it so I'm going to leave that turned on for a moment. So there's the original background. Here I did a quick color change. Just brought the colors away from that warm look. But I don't think it's quite as nice as the warm one. I tried a black and white conversion and I think that works particularly well. And it certainly works well with the vignette. The only thing I said about earlier on was a sepia tone and I haven't tried one of those let me do that here quickly control U will do that tick the color eyes hue about 25 probably the saturation around 6 no it needs a little bit more here sometimes it does push it up to 10 12 there we have quite a nice sepia tone if we want it to be honest though out of the two I think I quite like the monochrome Here's one where I've just mixed the mono with colour, just brought the opacity down. So all I've done really is tempered the colour, so it's not a million miles different to this one here. Here I'm back to the colour one from the background because I like that. But this one, if I turn it on and off, you can see I've added some colour 
to the postman's face I thought the face looked just a little bit pale so I just did a bit of colour work with the sponge tool set to saturate so my favourites really are the black and white and this one with the vignette so this one this one and this one I would need to take the lock off to get rid of that I think so this one this one and this one I'm happy to get rid of because they were experiments the two I'm going to save is first the black and white one and then the color one one final thought if you wanted to put a texture on any of these images you'd have to be a little bit careful because they are high res but you'll notice they're grayed out even though we don't have a smart object we are working with a 16-bit color document so at some stage to finally save these images I generally go to my image menu mode and I drop these down to 8 bits per channel what I've tried to do with this video is to give you a realistic view of how we might set about creating a montage including all of the ducking and diving that we inevitably do I hope I've been successful and I've not bored you with too long a video.